Rebels will receive the kick. Underway in Oxford. This is Jeff Scott from the four. Scott, one of their home run hitters, out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. And that is where the 5'11 junior from Scuba, Mississippi, Randall Mackey, will make his first SEC start. Mackey is 8 of 18 in his game a couple of weeks ago. They look over the middle, complete. That's Smelly, the tight end, out over the 35 to the 36. A nice gain of about eight on first down. That was Jamal Mosley with the reception on first down. Little option. And Mackey keeps it to pick up the first down. And uh, Bradley Saul is a guy who has uh, poten potentially NFL uh, aspirations. He's a very good left tackle, but this is a group that struggled against Vanderbilt uh, and early in the season, but uh, they have been playing better of late. Pass downfield, wide open. And out of bounds, forced and goal from the three. It's Brassel. On second and goal. Mackey on the pitch. Scott trying to get to the edge. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Heron to pass. Wide open underneath the tight end, Michael Williams, with a lot of open real estate and still on its feet. Finally tripped up at the 37-yard line, first and 10. Andrew White split to the bottom of your screen, a talented freshman for Alabama. First down and 10. Quick slant complete to Hanks. And Hanks with his second touch of the game. Alabama on the fringes of field goal range. McCarron back to pass. Underneath complete. And the freshman with a nice catch and a first down conversion. DeAndrew White, who had two touchdown catches last week. And he gets another touch here, trying to get to the edge. And scores! Bama with an answer. For a 59-yard pass to Brassel to set up the scoring drive earlier. Play fake on first and 10, going up top again. A lot of contact and no flag on the play. <laughs> He's got a quarterback who throws a nice deep ball, misses a call there, but they shouldn't take that. Uh, they shouldn't pull that out of the playbook. It seems to be working. Handed off to Jeff Scott, who's going to lose a yard or two. Karen under heat and wisely throws it away. Good pressure up front by the guy that has been ubiquitous tonight all over the field defensively, Wayne Dorsey. All right, Wendy back here, second down and 10 for Randall Mackey. The draw going nowhere. Enrique Davis. Stopped up. Alabama not caught looking ahead, apparently, yet. Richardson staying on his feet. And, Ed, there's some of that balance that you talked about. That wide base finally brought down after a gain of about 10. He just has the ability to keep his feet wide. He can cut. He's got great power. And he's really patient, waiting for the people to go by as his offensive line blocks. Karen on the quick slant, complete. That's Darius Hanks with another first down, working against Marcus Temple, a 12-yard game. Third and eight. Underneath, there's the freshman who slips and falls short of the first down by a couple of yards. He picked up six on the play. Richardson out of the Wildcat formation to take the direct snap. He fakes the handoff on the fly sweep. Broke a tackle for the first down. The indomitable running style of Trent Richardson paying off and moving the pile by about seven yards. Richardson cuts it up north-south and runs over a defender. Gets down to the 14-yard line. This guy can push you around. Great push by him on that play. Richardson again. They use him like a battering ram close to the 10-yard line. Knight makes the stop. A four-yard gain. Richardson between the tackles and waltzes into the end zone, untouched. Touchdown, Alabama. 
Temple has a fractured ankle. So not good for the Rebels in the secondary, guys. Temple, a real leader in the secondary. Their most consistent player back there all season long. Singleton on the kickoff return. Tobias Singleton looking to break one. Still on his feet. And pushed out of bounds at midfield by Dean Miller. Mackey under a little bit of heat. Uses his feet wisely, sliding head first. And picks up the first down at Alabama's 35-yard line, a 10-yard gain. And that time, even though he just kind of threw it downfield hoping for something, at least he didn't take a sack. Jeff Scott with nowhere to go. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Archie Manning's number 18 is the official, that's right, the official speed limit on the university campus. Well, they were going to change it to uh, Eli's number, but that was 10 miles an hour and everybody was late to class. <laughs> Strictly enforced, I might add. First down and 10. That's Mays picking up about seven. And uh, someone who's always in the fast lane, Wendy Nix, back in the studio. Hand off to Eddie Lacy, and Lacy powering forward picks up four for the first down. Well, a great day of college football on ESPN concludes with a key matchup in the Pac 12. Arizona State, good defensively. A lot of turnovers, but remember all the guys they've had hurt. Starting linebacker, court, all, all Pac-10 cornerback out. Not sure they're going to be able to slow him down too much. Can't slow down Eddie Lacy. That nice spin move. Well executed. Makes it out to the 46-yard line. Third and four. Karen gets rid of it quickly. Enough for the first down to Smelly at the 43-yard line. I, again, why I think Alabama is the best team. They're becoming an offense that's very tough to defend. They do so many different things well. Running the ball, one of them. Lacey, part of their depth, but there's a flag down on the interior line. Back at the 41-yard line in the area of holding. Karen underneath. Complete. And short of the first down is Kenny Bell. But I think you're in four down territory again. A good job by McCarron finding something. Kate Foster from 53. And far short, and it's going to come out of the end zone. And a nice return out to the 33. Uh, they were not ready to and now they come out in the same formation that they had switched to probably the same call and third and 11 a pressure off the corner backside pressure and it's picked off in the 39 yard line Lester still on his feet and picking up a couple of blockers too still on his feet but there's a flag down Lester all the way down to the four yard line for Alabama there's a flag thrown all the way back at the 32. After the interception, illegal block in the back, number 92, defense. Richardson turns it north-south. And a first down inside the 25-yard line. Special player for the defensive time. Not to mention one of the better receivers on the team. Gets the carry here, leaps over a tackler. And a nice straight arm all the way down to the 16-yard line. Frank Crawford got a whole bunch of hand to the face. Not huge top-end speed, but just the ability in space to be powerful and move that, that kind of jump cut. Awfully special guy. Give it to him again. Flag down. Richardson gets it into the end zone. But hold on. There's a flag thrown back at the 13. Holding number 73. Offense. Second and 18. Karen with tons of time. Richardson showing you his receiving skills and running skills. Bowling his way inside the 10 to the 6. Short of the first down. Mays in motion to the top of your screen. McCarron. Throws it out of bounds through the back of the end zone. And a little bit of a win then for Mississippi, right? This is Jeremy Shelley from about 24 yards out. 
And Shelley knocks it through. A big part of that scoring drive set up by Trent Richardson. Mississippi with a singular goal of hanging around until the fourth quarter. I want list to slip away too much. With 114 to go in the first half. Herman finding a little bit of open room here. Reversing field and a great return all the way down to the 38 of Alabama. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. But look at this. Clock start to melt away. I, I think you got to throw it or get it past the first down marker out of bounds. Mackey sacked back of the 41. You don't want to take a sack either. Averaging almost 47 yards per punt. And here's that rugby style rollout. Lane for the coffin corner, and this is going to be a nice punt. It'll be down at around the five or inside. And Mark, hey, put a little hey, asterisk hey, next hey, to hey. that drive there. It's down in ten, and Karen keeps it himself. And uh, SEC football, you see what it's all about right there on the field. The trenches, the combat. The warfare that goes on on the respective lines of scrimmage as we go downstairs to Gene Edwards with Houston Nutt. McCarron under some heat and he converts it. Mays slips and falls, but he got a nice spot. He got out over the 38 and picks up the first down. That another shallow crossing route hit by McCarron with good protection. But a play fake now. Here's Richardson. Nice cutback and brought down from behind at the 44 yard line, but another first down on a 15 yard gain. And there you see why Richardson is the second leading receiver on this team. I'm really impressed with this sophomore quarterback. Over the middle, wide open at the 25 yard line. Hanks and Hanks still on the move with intentions taking him all the way down to the seven yard line. Richardson on the run breaks a tackle and another touchdown for Trent Richardson What about the 450 pound bench press how impressive of it is that by running back again? Time? That's right up there with NFL offensive and defensive line Don't ask me what I think <laughs> <laughs> on the kickoff return out to the 42 It's Tobias Singleton. And let's go downstairs to Janine for this report Third and two Little pressure coming. Mackey steps up, uses his legs, and gets the first down. Remember that he was higher rated than Cam Newton. It was the success of McCluster that made the coaches think this short guy might be able to get it done for us. On second and nine, Mackey on the move and tackled by Nico Johnson. First down and ten. Richardson straight ahead. Boy, you can do all the squats you want, Ed, and do all the bench pressing you want at 450 and 600 pounds, whatever. But uh, when you run like that, it really makes sense, doesn't it? This guy is one of the best finishers of a run that I've seen in a long time in college football. Takes the handoff again. Breaks three tackles, gets away. And Trent Richardson picking up a couple blocks. He might take it. Cuts back, stays on his feet. What a move. Shake it, bake it, and he makes it. Touchdown. They both should come in healthy with a couple of new wrinkles on offense and defense. That's going to be an unbelievable matchup. I'll ask you who you like in a minute. And a sack. And a fumble. And a recovery by Alabama. Courtney Upshaw with the big hit. Karen under center. Hands it off to Fowler. Good hand walk inside the 10 down to the 8 yard line. Sawyer making the stop on the play. Here he is again. Fowler strolls in. Touchdown, Alabama. So I think it's good for both teams. So I think it ends up being a wash. I think after next week's game, we'll look at how many injuries there are. Tell you which team's going to get more help from the bye week. Enrique Davis swarmed by a host 
of Alabama tackle. It's my intellectual property. Chickens around the world are running for cover. Second and 12, running for cover like quarterback Randall Mackey back at the one yard line where he's sacked. Courtney Upshaw again. And coming into the year, big questions. You lose Greg McElroy and Julio Jones. And if anything, I think this offense is better than it was last year. Underneath is one of the offensive weapons they're starting to utilize a little bit more. Kenny Bell. They're trying to get someone, maybe White's the guy, to start stretching the field a bit for him like Julio Jones did. Darren, the trigger man, hands it off this time to Fowler. Lowers his hat and runs over a defender for another Alabama first down. They've got depth everywhere. Third and seven. Get to the three for a first down. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Brandon Gibson with the catch. You can develop the players more, and that's something that Nick Saban in his background playing and coaching for my old coach, Don James, at Kent State. He, he really enjoys the development, not just on the field, but off the field of these young men. You just don't get that experience in the NFL. Nice return up to the 40-yard line by Tobias Singleton. He's had some nice kickoff returns tonight. He had laminated cards made up and gave them out to each of his players. Now, the picture on that laminated card was a picture of Cam Newton and Nick Fairley of Auburn celebrating in the midst of Alabama players. And the credo is never again. They want to remember that and not ever let it happen again. Jeff Scott with a nice run. You have to commend a guy who's on the hot seat. Let's make no bones about that for his job here at Ole Miss to make a decision against an opponent. And you lose a guy, Bolden, who may have an NFL future. Yeah. The Rebels actually led 7-0 in the first quarter. Fourth and 11. Mackey completes it for the first down and a nice catch by Brassel. And 10 defense coming after him a little bit. Mackey escaping. Downfield and caught at about the two-yard line. What a grab once again by Nicholas Brassel. Third and goal. Mackey hands it off. Scott can't get there. Stopped up short of the end zone. They hand it off. And the defense intransigent, holding, stoning Mississippi. 6'2", six, 6'3", six, guy gets underneath his pads. He might go for a long ride. Did the same thing on that play. Ran his way. Fowler just dragging a couple of would-be tacklers out near the 25 and beyond. And another first down. And I think you see that across the board, not just with head coaches, but also with assistant coaches. Jim McElwain comes all the way from Fresno State to coach here. And so I think you get some of the best players and some of the best coaches. Well, there's one of the best players on the field tonight. Fowler on the loose. They're trying to run him down and can't reel him in. Touchdown, Alabama. Washington, my alma mater, looking much better than they have in many years. Chris Polk, a NFL level running back. Offensive lines playing better. They be a good race in the north before all is said and done. We saw them last week against Tennessee. They're playing. Forget the 0-2 start. They're a better team than that. The East is wide open. And, and it's easy to say, well, there's nobody in the East who can compete against LSU or Alabama. You've got a week to go in and play a team that really has nothing to lose. And all you're trying to do is think, We've got to win this game. And so I think Georgia presents the most problems for either LSU or Alabama if they come out of the West uh, unscathed. Well, uh, that time Randall Mackey didn't come out of that play unscathed. Sacked by three Alabama players. The University of Alabama had the ultimate unity building experience with that tornado that was thrust upon them. So tragic with 47 people being killed, including six Alabama students. And one of them was the girlfriend of Alabama snapper Carson Tinker. And as you said, there was so much community outreach and, and players assisting in the cleanup and other players from other schools such as Kent State were even sent to help and it was a remarkable thing when the Kent State team got a standing ovation by Alabama fans when they took to the field for the season opener. Philip Sims in a quarterback. Hands it off to Blake Sims. And Sims looks like he's got a top-end gear, doesn't he? <laughs> there are so many people who take, who, who, who 
get such joy out of this team. It can be a lot of pressure. I don't blame him. Sims giving the coach a little bit more joy. A nice run. And when you look at the schedule they play, especially their conference schedule, that's pretty amazing. Going into Florida and getting a convincing win and another convincing one tonight. And shutting out a pretty competitive Vanderbilt team as well. 52 to 7, the final score. Houston Nutt going to regroup and get back to work tomorrow. A.J. McCarron starting quarterback with another impressive night for the Crimson Tide. Coming up next on ESPN2, college football scoreboard. Greg Cunningham and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Mark Jones. And good night from Oxford, Mississippi, and another convincing win by Alabama. They're about breaking ankles and breaking hearts.